the chain rule is a really useful method for finding the derivative of the composition of two functions. Let's start with a brief review of composition. f composed with g means that we apply f to the output of g. As a diagram, this means we start with x and apply g first, then we apply f to the output to get our final result. I'm going to call g the inner function and f the outer function because g looks like it's on the inside of f in this standard notation. We can write h of x, which is the square root of sine of x, as the composition of two functions by letting sine of x be the inner function and the square root function be the outer function, which I'll write as f of u equals the square root of u. I like to do this sort of dissection of functions by drawing a box around part of the function. Whatever's inside the box becomes my inner function, and whatever we do to the box becomes our outer function, in this case, taking the square root. This allows us to write h of x as the composition f of g of x, where f and g are the outer and inner functions defined here. Please take a moment to write the next two functions as compositions of functions before you go on. A natural way to write k of x as a composition is to let our inner function be tan of x plus secant of x. The outer function describes what happens to that boxed inner function. It gets cubed and multiplied by 5. There are several ways to write the next example as a composition of functions. For example, we could take x squared as our inner function, and then our outer function takes e to the sine of that inner function. Alternatively, we could take the inner function to be sine of x squared, and then the outer function has to be e to the power. It's also possible to write our function r of x as a composition of three functions. An inner function of x squared, a middle function of sine, and an outermost function of e to the power, which I'll write as h of v equals e to the v. When calculating the derivatives of complicated functions, it's really important to recognize them as compositions of simpler functions. That way we can build up the derivative in terms of the simpler derivatives. And that's the idea behind the chain rule. The chain rule tells us if we have two differentiable functions, then the derivative of the composition, f composed with g of x, is equal to the derivative of the outer function evaluated on the inner function times the derivative of the inner function. Sometimes the chain rule is written instead in Leibniz notation, that is the dy dx notation. To see how this works, let's let u equal g of x and let's let y equal f of u. In other words, y is f of g of x. Now du dx is just another way of writing g prime of x. And dy du is another way of writing f prime of u. Or in other words, f prime of g of x. Finally, if we write dy dx, that means we're taking the derivative of f composed with g. So that's f composed with g prime of x. Using this key, I can rewrite the expression above as dy dx equals dy du times du dx. These are the two alternative ways of writing the chain rule. 
Let's use the chain rule to take the derivative of the square root of sine x. Actually, I'm going to rewrite this as h of x equals sine x to the 1 half power to make it easier to take derivatives. As a composition, we're thinking of the inner function as sine x and the outer function as the 1 half power. So the chain rule tells us that to take h prime of x, we need to take the derivative of the outer function, evaluate it on the inner function, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. We know that the derivative of the inner function, sine x, is just cosine x, and the derivative of the outer function is 1 half times u to the negative 1 half. So h prime of x is then 1 half times u to the negative 1 half, but that's evaluated on the inner function, sine of x, and then we multiply that by cosine of x. Again, that's the derivative of the outer function evaluated on the inner function times the derivative of the inner function. And we found the derivative using the chain rule. For the next example, our inner function was tan x plus secant x, and our outer function, f of u, was 5u cubed. So k prime of x is 15 times u squared, but that's evaluated on the inner function, tan x plus secant x. Then we still need to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function, tan x plus secant x. So we get the 15 tan x plus secant x squared times the derivative of tan x, which is secant squared x, plus the derivative of secant x, which is secant x tan x. And that's our chain rule derivative. In this last example, we're thinking of the outermost function as being e to the power. And its inner function is sine of x squared. But sine of x squared itself has an outer function of sine and an inner function of x squared. So to find r prime of x, we first have to take the derivative of the outermost function. Well, the derivative of e to the power is just e to the power, and now we evaluate that on its inner function, sine of x squared. But now by the chain rule, we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function, sine of x squared. I'll copy down the e to the sine x squared, and I'll use the chain rule a second time to find the derivative of sine x squared. Now the outer function is sine, and so the derivative of sine is cosine. I need to evaluate it on its inner function of x squared, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. After copying things down, I just have to take the derivative of x squared, which is 2x by the power rule. This video introduced the chain rule, which says that the derivative of f composed with g at x is equal to f prime at g of x times g prime at x, or equivalently, dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx.